Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today, we're delving into Intel's Application Optimizer, or APO for short. Now, what is APO, you might be asking? Well, put simply, it is a really neat new feature that can dramatically boost your CPU's gaming performance when CPU limited, though for now, only in a very narrow selection of games. Okay, just two games, and you do need a brand new Intel 14th generation processor to use it. But still, it's very cool. Now, you might be wondering why this cool new 14th gen feature is only being tested now and wasn't covered in our day one review. Although I did talk about APO in our review, but I wasn't able to test it as the MSI motherboard that we were using for testing didn't yet support it. And in fact, most boards didn't support APO at that time. So that's why you probably saw little to no APO testing in the day one reviews. Since then though, we have been meaning to take a look at APO and now that it's properly supported in the publicly released BIOS revisions, the time has come. Actually, I did this testing a few weeks ago, and at the time, I still couldn't get APO working on our MSI Z790 motherboard, so I got my hands on the awesome-looking ASUS ROG Maximus Z790 Dark Hero. So to get things started, I entered the BIOS, and there you have to navigate to the Advanced tab, then the Thermal Configuration submenu, into the Intel Dynamic Tuning Technology Configuration submenu, and there you can set the Intel Dynamic Tuning Technology option to Enabled. And this setting is not enabled by default. But you're not done yet, as you have to download the latest version of the Intel DTT driver, once that's done though, you are good to go, but I'd recommend installing the Intel APO app from the Microsoft Store as this will allow you to enable slash disable APO within Windows. But to be clear, it first needs to be enabled at the BIOS level to work. Once all that's done though, you're good to go. Though be aware that for now, APO still only works in two games, Rainbow Six Siege and Metro Exodus, which are sort of odd titles to start with. Well, Rainbow Six Siege, that makes sense. It's not the most popular multiplayer game right now, nor is it the most recently released, but it is still very popular and it's a competitive shooter and therefore it is often CPU limited. Metro Exodus, on the other hand, makes no sense as it's a single player story driven game and therefore players typically prioritize graphical fidelity over frame rate, meaning this is almost always going to be a GPU limited title and it certainly will be with a 14th gen processor. So the next step is to test APO, see how it performs, and try and see if we can work out what it's actually doing. For testing, I'm using the ASUS Strix RTX 4090 graphics card on the ASUS ROG Maximus Z790 Dark Hero with 32 gigabytes of DDR5 7200 cell 34 memory from G-Skill. Display driver version 546.01 has been used with the latest most up-to-date version of Windows 11. So, let's get into the data. First up, I tested Metro Exodus using the built-in benchmark with the ultra quality settings, as this is typically how you'd play the game using a high-end GPU. And at 1080p with APO on, we found a nice 10% performance uplift, taking us from 195 FPS to 215 FPS. Not exactly a dramatic difference there, but it is free performance, so we'll certainly take it. Then at the more GPU limited 1440p resolution, the margin was reduced to 6%. So not amazing, but again, it is free performance. So there's really no downside here. Sadly though, at 4K, we are heavily GPU limited, so additional CPU performance makes no difference. Now I wanted to take a look at real in-game performance, just to make sure Intel wasn't optimizing performance for the built-in or canned benchmark. And thankfully, that's not the case. And in fact, we saw much larger performance gains when actually playing the game. At 1080p, enabling APO provided an additional 20% performance, hitting 246 FPS on average, a remarkable improvement. Even at 1440p, we're looking at a 13% boost, and at 4K, we're still in for a nice 5% boost. So a fantastic set of results, and I'd love to see this kind of thing from Intel in many more games. Now, the only other game supported by APO at this point in time is Rainbow Six Siege, and first up, we have the built-in benchmark results using the very high quality preset with the render scale set to 100%. Here we're looking at a 5% increase at 1080p with no gain seen at 1440p or 4K. And truth be told, I'm not sure the 1400K needs a performance boost in this title. I'd say around 600 FPS is enough. Anyway, we moved on to some in-game testing. We found that frame rates aren't quite as extreme as they are in the built-in benchmark, but still we are looking at a 6% boost at 1080p though nothing at 1440p or 4K. 
So I decided to go back and retest Rainbow Six Siege using the low quality settings, but with the render scale set to 100%. Under these conditions, the built-in benchmarks are a 9% boost at 1080p, but then again, nothing at 1440p or 4K. I should stress though that all of the Rainbow Six Siege results are based on a three run average, as the built-in benchmark in particular is very unreliable, with run-to-run -run variants being quite extreme. So results based on just a single pass can be quite inaccurate. Now the in-game testing is far more consistent in terms of run-to-run -run variants, and here we saw an impressive 19% uplift when enabling APO, taking us from 610 FPS to 724 FPS. So that's a phenomenal performance gain. Even at 1440p, we're looking at a 17% performance uplift, so huge gains there, and by the time we reach the 4K resolution, the data is heavily GPU limited, as you'd expect, so APO has no chance of boosting frame rates there. Okay, so before I try and work out what APO is doing to improve performance in these games, I thought I'd try and brute force those FPS gains by disabling the E-cores. Here we see that with APO disabled, we saw 610 FPS on average. Now with the E-cores disabled, along with hyperthreading, the frame rate is increased by just 4% to 633 FPS. Then if we disable the E-cores, but leave hyperthreading active, the average frame rate reached 651 FPS. That's a 7% gain over stock. However, even with the E-cores disabled, we're still coming in 10% slower than the APO configuration. And for those of you wondering, if you disable the E-cores, APO can no longer be used, as the E-cores are an integral part of the APO feature. So APO looks to be doing something pretty impressive here, so I guess we'll take a close look and try and work out what that something is. Now this is really cool. Here we're looking at two side-by-side in-game tests in Rainbow Six Siege, with and without APO enabled. Two things you'll notice right away, the frame rate is consistently much higher with APO enabled, which is to be expected based on what we just saw, though please note that the runs here aren't always 100% synced, and of course, what you're looking at here isn't based on a three-run average, but the FPS counter isn't what we're interested in here. And as a side note, something that we haven't looked at yet is power usage, but it seems with APO enabled, we're not only getting a 20% boost in performance on average, but we're also seeing around a 10 to 15% reduction in power usage, which is huge. Couple that with the much better performance, and we're talking about a serious efficiency improvement. So how is Intel achieving all of this? Well, it seems as though they're putting those efficient cores to work and actually making efficient use of them. With APO disabled, you'll notice that the E-cores are parked for the most part, and only very occasionally do we see a core clock up to around one gigahertz, meaning the P-cores are doing all the heavy lifting, so they're tackling the game and any background task processing. But with APO enabled, we see that multiple E-cores of the same cluster are often fired up and running at over two gigahertz. Presumably they're working to free up the primary thread so it can work on just processing game data, effectively prioritizing the game, resulting in a performance boost. Now, Rainbow Six Siege certainly isn't utilizing all of the eight P cores, so it would make sense that these cores can handle anything the game throws at them, as well as basic background tasks, and that's certainly true. Still, it seems as though handing off the lower priority background tasks to the E cores might be freeing up the L3 cache for the P cores, as the E cores work best out of their dedicated L2 cache. There should also be very little ring bus traffic from the E-Core clusters, as the Raptor Lake L2 cache buffer is big enough to hold the majority of memory accesses. And this makes sense, as pulling less data across the ring bus, that'll save power, while simultaneously freeing up the P-Cores, which improves gaming performance. This is my theory for now anyway, so I could certainly be wrong about all of this, but what I'm not wrong about is that the E-Cores are doing much more work with APO enabled, we can clearly see that. Okay, well that was all super impressive and exciting stuff for Intel CPU owners. Well, owners of a new 14th gen CPU, so I guess this was super exciting for a very select few of you, which is a real shame. Intel has done really well here, though I can't help but feel they've managed to shoot themselves in the foot with APO, because there's no technical reason for why this feature can't also be supported by 12th and 13th generation CPUs, as they too have e-cores, and are compatible with the same LGA 1700 socket. Hell, the only difference between 13th and 14th generation processors is the APO support, which is a software-based feature.
But not wanting to jump to conclusions here, I did reach out to Intel because maybe, just maybe, they were going to be the good guys here and support existing customers. So I asked them, is there a technical reason for why 12th and 13th gen parts aren't supported? And if not, will they be included in the future? Their response to that question was as follows. Intel has no plans to support prior generations of products with application optimization. That's a really garbage response to be perfectly blunt about it. Sure, it's probably the expected PR response. So I guess it's more the stance Intel's taking here that I have issue with, not so much the typical PR response. And this really is frustrating because APO looks to address some of the issues that eCores have caused gamers. But it's even more than that, it actually makes use of eCores, as APO is more performant than simply disabling the eCores altogether. But if you spent good money on a 12th or 13th gen processor, and that includes 12900KS and 13900KS owners who might have spent upwards of $800 US, this software-based feature that could absolutely improve performance in the two tiles that we've tested here today, it isn't available to you because apparently Intel don't care about your past purchases, they just want you to buy a 14th gen model. The only way I see Intel reversing this decision and opening up APO to all LJ1700 users is if there's enough community pushback, like there was when AMD foolishly tried to end AM4 support prematurely. We nailed AMD for trying to do that, as did the enthusiast community, and a similar level of uproar would be required here. As for when we can expect more games to be added to the APO support list, I did ask Intel, and they just gave me another generic PR response saying, Intel is committed to continued support and continuous improvement of application optimization on future platforms. As game support is added, it will show up in the application optimization UI. I also asked if Intel was aiming to include all or most future AAA titles, and they responded with, Intel will continue to evaluate additional applications and games for support on an ongoing basis. This will include select current and future AAA game titles. Now, other than the blatant disrespect to existing customers of recently released products, my only other concern when it comes to APO is the limited list of supported games. Of course, you have to start somewhere, but having Metro Exodus as just one of the two games to launch the 14th gen with seems a bit odd to me. Intel has come out and said that APO won't work with all games and applications, and I should note that this isn't meant to be a game-specific feature, though at the moment it is. Now, Tim and I talked about APO support on last week's Harbour Unbox podcast episode, and we were both concerned with just how many games would receive APO support. Again, starting with Metro Exodus, it's pretty odd. For me, a heavily CPU limited and much newer slash popular title such as Starfield or Baldur's Gate 3, that would have made a lot more sense, and it would have helped APO garner a lot more attention. This makes me wonder, just how many games has Intel tried to include APO support for, but found it offered no real performance gain? Is it 10 titles or 100? I guess we don't really know until Intel adds more games to the list, and thus far, they've failed to add even a single additional title, which in itself is a bit worrying. Anyway, I don't want to be too negative about Intel's new APO feature, as what we've seen so far is extremely impressive, at least in terms of performance. I just wish they'd open it up to 12th and 13th gen owners as well. And I also really hope that we see a lot more titles added in the very near future, because if we do, it's going to put a lot of heat on AMD's Zen 4 processors, probably a bit of pricing pressure there. And as always, competition is good for us, the consumers. And that is going to do it for this video. If you liked it, you know what to do. Subscribe for more content. And if you'd like to become a Hardware Box community member, receive some pretty cool perks in return. We have Floatplane or Patreon. Sign up to either one of those. We'll give you access to our exclusive Discord server, monthly live streams, Q&A stuff, and behind the scenes content. So check it out if you're interested. But if not, that's perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.